Hi everyone, this is ACU Boot, and for today's videos, we're working on the Mercedes E250 W212 using a 274 engines. There's no engine lights on the dashboard, but due to the driving experience, the customer complains that there's a lack of performance during acceleration period. I will demonstrate for you. As you can see, this car acceleration is quite poor and with that being said, let's diagnose this car together. I've scanned the entire car for four coats and the entire car has only one four coat stored and that coat is stored in the Bush Pressure Turbo Charger. So the four coats I got is the P029921 and to get to the bottom of these problems, we have to analyze some live data. And so this is all of our live data inside the boost pressure control. I will give some breath and maybe you can comment down below which one you think is out of the ordinary. And with today's symptom, I'll be going a little bit deeper through details until we found out what's happening. So we've got a fault code for our boost pressure turbocharger and before we diagnose this fault, Let's take a closer look to what is this turbocharger system actually looks like. The turbocharger draws in fresh air via the air filter at the compressor inlet and guides it through the compressor outlet into the charge air pipe upstream of the charge air cooler. Due to the high rotational speed of the compressor wheel and the resulting high volumetric flow rate, the air in the charge air pipe is compressed to a boost pressure of max 1.1 power. The charge air flows through the charge air cooler via the charge air line. This then cools the compressed and heated charge air and guides it through a charge air line to the charge air manifold. The volumetric efficiency of the cylinders is improved as a result of charging. This increases engine torque and engine power. The ECM calculates the corresponding fuel quantity for the increased air mass. The pressure in the turbocharger is controlled via boost pressure control flap and an air recirculation function. A noise damper reduces the boost pressure fluctuations and posing noises. The main component of the charging system is a single-state turbocharger. This is welded to the exhaust manifold at the exhaust side of the engine in the form of a module. And so this is the boost pressure control vacuum system. On engine 274, the boost pressure is controlled electro-pneumatically by the boost pressure control pressure transducer. The vacuum is generated by the mechanical vacuum pump mounted on the engine. In a wide open throttle range, the maximum boost pressure is built up. In order to reduce the boost pressure, the exhaust flows for driving the turbocharger turbine is di diverted through a bypass by opening the boost pressure control flap. The vacuum reservoir supplies the boost pressure control pressure transducer with vacuum. This actuates the boost pressure control flap vacuum unit. The vacuum unit then opens the boost pressure control flap via a linkage, which closes the bypass. The boost pressure control flap allows the exhaust to flow by past the turbine wheel, thus regulating the boost pressure and limiting the turbine speed. In this way, the boost pressure can be matched to the current load requirement of the engine. And to monitor the current boost pressure, the pressure sensor upstream of the throttle valve transmits an appropriate voltage signal to the ECM. The pressure sensor downstream of the air filter, which is located in the intake line upstream of the turbocharger, is used by the ECM to monitor the charging process. The charge air temperature is registered in the charge air manifold by the charge air temperature sensor downstream of the throttle valve and sent to the ECM in the form of a voltage signal. Moreover, we also have a bypass air system due to inertia of the shaft, compression wheel and turbine wheel. The turbocharger continues to operate for a while after the vehicle enters deceleration mode. When the throttle valve actuator is closed rapidly, a charge air pressure wave runs back to the turbocharger. 
these pressure fluctuations would cause a situation at the compressor wheel with low flow rates and high pressure, resulting in brief howling noise and mechanical stress. Opening the bypass air switch over valve prevents this through rapid pressure reductions via the bypass duct into the intake sides of a turbocharger. For a bigger picture, let's have a look at the block diagram where it demonstrates all the electrical components for charging. This 31-5 is the boost pressure control pressure transducer, which receives the control signal from the ECM. According to our symptom, the poor accelerations might be the result of a failing turbocharger, a malfunction turbo transducer, or the air leakage along the pipe. And with that being said, let's go ahead and check all of them. So first of all, we're gonna have our turbo checked. This is the inside of our turbocharger. We can easily check them by spinning and pushing. As you can see, our turbocharger is still good. Moving on to our turbo transducer. We have to measure both the resistance, the power, and the signal to see if it's failing or the signal aren't being transferred. So we're having a nearly 13 ohms, which means our transducer is still working because the acceptable range is within 9 to 13 ohms. Then turn on the ignition and measure the power. We have nearly 12 volts, so our power is present. Lastly, it's checking our signal. As you can see, this is the pulse to control our transducer, which means our transducer is still working properly. And so after all the measurements, it all comes down to a leakage. This is the pipe from our boost pressure welcome unit to the pressure transducer and to the charge air manifold. As you can see, this pipe is disconnected to the charge air manifold. Shall we start reinstall it? and see whether the problem is still there. After we connect the pipe, we shall clear the full coat. And by using Sentry, you can trigger the pressure transducer for some testing. We've made a video on how to do it, so you can watch it at our playlist. So let's erase the full coat. And at the beginning of this video, we've asked you to comment down below the difference of the data. And now, we're gonna show you exactly what it is. As you can see, the car acceleration has been improved. And as you might notice, the value of pressure in the upstream throttle valve should be increased when you press the gas pedal. At this point, we can say that our problem has been solved. And to recap, in today's videos, we'll show you in depth of how the turbocharger system looks like on this Mercedes E250 W212 using two and four engines. Moreover, we've also fixed the poor acceleration issues that we've had. If you have any questions or problems, don't hesitate to contact us and we will help you as soon as possible. Until then, we really hope you enjoyed today's videos. Thanks for watching and see you next time.